This isn't just a sailing race. Every four years, the world's bravest sailors get together for the ultimate test of human endurance. The Vendée Globe is a race of legends. You have to have some serious guts and skill to do this race. It's France to France via Antarctica. Three months to complete with a month spent in the Southern Ocean. From tropical to Arctic conditions, storms to dead calm, and they do it all alone. So far, only two Canadians have ever competed in this world-renowned ocean race. The first Canadian, Jerry Roos, tragically lost his life while racing. The second, Derek Hatfield, built his Open 60s Spirit of Canada right here on home soil. The yacht was a symbol of national pride, but about halfway into his race, it was over. Derek Hatfield had to retire early from the Vendée Globe due to a damaged mast. But the end of his race was the beginning of Canada's next Vendée Globe story, and Canadian Ocean Racing was born. The Open 60 is designed to take one man around the world non-stop. It must be 60 feet long, 90 feet tall, and 5 meters deep. The rest is open to innovation, design, and technology. After the Vendée Globe in 2008, we took this beautiful Open 60, built in Canada, and continued to race her for Canada. We took her out in the Pacific Racing Circuit, where she competed and won outside of her class in traditional waters. We wanted to give her a second life she deserved. Now she's on her third life, the one that she was destined for. Lots of volunteers put in many man hours to get O'Canada ready for her second journey to the Vendée Globe. We had a round the world race to get to, let alone compete in, and this was just the beginning. Day eight on the Okanda refit. The boys here are scrubbing down the old girl, trying to get all the little blemishes and bluffs out of her, making her look pretty and shine bright. It's day 10, uh, we're here on Okanda, and today we are doing some sanding to get ready to paint. Before the rain comes, I'm going to be working with Jason on the mast step and we're going to hopefully get the dagger boards ready to go up and down as well too, so we'll see ya. So day 11 on the O Canada, we sanded a lot yesterday and finally we're ready to paint today. So we uh, we taped the edges where the antifoul meets the um, freeboard and now we're ready to go. So it's day 14 here on O Canada and as you can see today we are cleaning winches. These are a pretty vital part to making this boat go. Here they've gotten really really dirty so we're going to go through, pull everything apart, grease everything up and put them right back together again. So day 18 we're in the North Sail sail loft all day checking out kites, checking out the new head sails, making sure we don't have any rips, making sure everything's good for the season. Friday the 13th today we've had a bit of work done this week pretty successfully I think. We're working on all the sails, getting them surveyed, the winches, we've gone through those, cleaned all those up, and now we're going through all the ballast systems. Day 22 on O Canada, we've had a whole bunch of little jobs. Now, the last sort of job of the day is painting. We're priming this, uh, the mast ready to be painted nice and red tomorrow, so it looks uh, shiny for the big sail. Hi, my name is Vasily Angelblazer. It's day 24. This morning we moved the mast and we're working on rebuilding it. Just now we've started installing the new hoses for the water ballast. Day 25 with Canadian Ocean Racing. Had a bunch of guys working on the mast, putting the spreaders on. I've been upstairs working on the hydraulic cylinder. We actually got one of the big cylinders out. 
We're making sure that's all good for the delivery, and I hope that it uh, gets a little sunnier tomorrow. So it's day 27 here on Canadian Ocean Racing, and today the sun's out, so we're painting the keel. Jason and the boys are finishing up the race. It's a pretty momentous day for Canadian Ocean Racing today. We're stepping the masts of O Canada for the first time. So we just put it on the crane here and we're taking it over to the boat. We're going to put it back on the big crane and step it in the boat. So it'll be a full day's job, but uh, we're looking forward to having the mast up and allowing us to start working on a bunch of other new tasks. It took about two days of solid work to get the mast from a bare spar with spreaders and shrouds all rigged up, all the halyards run and uh, a lot of splicing work getting the loop splices onto the mast so the back space can be held in place. The radar is on, the electronics have been run and we'll put the mast up and that will allow us to start to rigging the boom and a lot of the other control lines on board. The Neil Canada mast is 90 foot long and it's, uh, we're going to be stepping onto a, a boat that's also on its cradle so 20 feet up in the air so we've got about 110 feet that we've got to lift the mast up to get her into place. So we've got an extra large crane here today and uh, it'll probably be just long enough to, to get a set up. So o Canada has been in uh, Shelter Island Marina now for uh, approximately two and a half years. It has been an icon for the yard. We put it right at the front of the boat yard uh, as a bit of a tourist attraction initially. And uh, there's been a few videos of it, uh, people thinking it was a secret weapon of Canada to uh, win the America's Cup. but. Uh, We've slowly ed educated everybody to uh, why the boat is here and what it was used for originally. And uh, it's been a fun boat to have around. No, I'm going gonna to miss the, miss the crew. It's been, it's been fun having you guys around. I felt like uh, you guys are a, a family and you've joined the Shelter Island family. And uh, we're going to miss having you guys here. And we wish you all the best. It's a momentous day. I mean, it's it's insane. I mean, to think that uh, this boat had absolutely, you know, no preparation put into it for the last two years. It's been sitting here two winters, two summers, two two long years for things to go wrong. Uh, and over a month, we've been able to put it back together. And as of right now, it's looking good. It's floating. Yeah, as of right now, it's floating. We're a long way off from being competitive, but I think, uh, I mean, it's, it's a good start. It's a good start. It's a good start. A hell of a good start. Uh, so it's a happy day. Happy day. Nothing's leaking yet, this is a good thing. Oh. We like boats to float. About two and a half minutes away from the start of the uh, Southern Straits race. Lots of boats out here, rain's been holding off. We've got the uh, fractional Code Zero hoisted right now. We want to take things slow with a lot of boats. We don't want to damage anything, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I think it's going to be a great start. On our way out of English Bay and into the Strait of Georgia. And uh, yeah, we take it pretty conservatively. You know, just hung back, let the, the mess get through at the start. It was quite crowded, so we just kind of slipped in behind. Got out the, the fro with a fractional zero, and now we're running downwind. Got about 12 knots in building. You can see some gray clouds in the horizon, so it looks like it's gonna keep on building here. And we should just get uh, heads nicely down the straight. Uh, you know, we got a couple boats still ahead of us, but we're catching them quickly, and we're just gonna keep on working our way up the, up the fleet. So far, things are going well. We're kind of getting into a groove with maneuvers. The teamwork is coming together. And uh, you know, that's really what it's all about. I think it's navigating. I mean, the Straits is uh, it's a very small um, area of water for this boat to sail in. I think there'll be a lot of local effects, which hopefully some of the guys on board know. But I think uh, if it gets rough this afternoon, it'll be uh, a little bit more of a survival race more than anything against these guys. Uh, but then once it lights off, I think the local effects will really come through. We're 
we got a nice kind of southwesterly right now that's filling in, so we're coming up the shore of Vancouver Island and gonna see if we can keep that through the night and get up to uh, our second mark rounding here. Gonna reel those guys in right over there. Good practice. You know, I think everybody's got a way better understanding what's going on, what to do with certain sales changes. So it's definitely been really, really good. We certainly set out what we wanted to accomplish. <laughs> Tell me how excited you are to go on deck right now. Yeah, um, I'm looking up in the words that it's not only cold, but wet and cold, so I'm not overly excited to get out there. It's not raining though. It's not raining. It's not raining. It's not raining. It's getting wet then. Lumpy fog. Lumpy fog. It's getting kind of snow. It does. I've never seen lumpy fog before. <laughs> oh, you're about to feel it. The lumpy fog version. Visibility is like 100 yards and everything is wet. I see. Oh no! I got you. That's gonna be a good one. Yeah. I've been sailing all my life and then kind of in my mid 20s I really got into the offshore focus and that challenge of sailing across an ocean successfully and safely uh, is a huge reward when you get to the other end. And so going around the world solo is the ultimate challenge in our sport. I've got a group of four young Canadians who I'm mentoring. So right now we're doing a, a cross-country tour of Canada, raising awareness and also raising uh, funds for our Van der Globe attempt. So yeah, it's not easy. These boats are like Formula One race cars or you know airplanes where it's really leading edge technology. It does come with a high price tag and that's why we're you know, looking to raise upwards of a half a million dollars to make this happen. I'm really just trying to aspire to uh, you know, raise the bar for Canadians and inspire you know, the next generation to keep doing this and uh, you know, reaching for the ultimate challenge. I'd say it's probably about 50, 60 knots out there. Definitely not what was forecasted. It's just, uh, uh, looks like the storm might be a little bit uh, stronger and it's accelerating around uh, Cape Finisterre, which is uh, just off our starboard view. Um, we just want to stay clear, um, get clear, get out. You know, it's a long race, it's a 5,000 mile race. As fun as the start is and how good it looks, get out safely and get on our way.
uh, saying that a sailing vessel with two people on board is sinking. Uh, just called uh, base control and yeah, they confirmed that there's an emergency going on and that there's a helicopter being sent out from King Minister Thoughts of Prayers to Eagle Boss and everyone involved in the Alex Thompson racing team. So I don't know if you can believe it, but today it's gotten a hell of a lot worse. So we were tired, motoring, there's Vigo, maybe some miles to go. Tied up at uh, Marina Corona, it's about 7 o'clock, just got, just got dark. And yeah, tired, sleepy. It's a number six, yeah. yeah. But I guess it's getting really tired and tough. It's been a rough couple days. excited to finally get going. It's been a long time coming. We've been here for almost a week already. So yeah, it's time to get going and head off to sea. Give me sweet, sweet, nothing, nothing. 